Hello, I'm Dr. Virginia Von Schaefer, and I'd like to talk to you today about the importance of viruses in our lives and how we can detect these infections and treat them effectively. Of course, we're all aware of the COVID virus, but one of the viruses that's very, very important in terms of causing chronic illness and cancer really doesn't get enough press. It's called the Epstein-Barr virus, and you may know it as uh, the acute infection named mono. Many people have been exposed to Epstein-Barr virus, many more than once in their lives, but often when they're in a school age where it's easy to um, pass it to others because it's an aerosolized uh, through the saliva or sharing drinks or like people say kissing, whatever, uh, but it is easily passed one person to the next. It can become a chronic problem because Epstein-Barr virus really in the traditional medical world doesn't have a treatment. If you've ever gotten uh, mono and you've gotten tested for it, the doctors will tell you just go home, take a rest, drink liquids, and it'll go away. However, there are many cases where people have gotten Epstein-Barr virus in the process of their you know, higher education and really been unable to continue. They're chronically ill and tired and fatigued and just can't seem to ever get better. So there's a wide range of symptoms. Some people are asymptomatic seemingly, some people are debilitated and chronically ill. And of course, when we check people for uh, cancer screening, we always look for the presence of the Epstein-Barr virus. Now the traditional testing involves um, a blood sample where they'll test for the antibodies that your immune system makes against the um, virus as it perceives it in your system. And these viral titers, as they were, as it were, are, are somewhat inaccurate, and even the reading of the test is very ambiguous. So other than showing an acute infection, you can't really differentiate between chronic infection, resolving infection, or even relapsing or reoccurring infection. So it's very important to try and go one step beyond this regular testing if in fact you're really uh, intent on finding out whether this is, can be a significant uh, factor in affecting your health or not. We, uh, I personally use uh, the RGCC Immunology Lab in Greece and they have developed an excellent test for exactly this problem. It's called the prime spot test. And it is very simple to send a blood specimen to their lab in London and have it fully analyzed for the presence of Epstein-Barr virus. And there are six forms that they will scrutinize. Herpes virus, there are several forms, cytomegalovirus, and even uh, HPV or human Popova virus, which you really, there is no blood test that is available in the United States to detect HPV. Uh, the other thing that the prime spot test can check for, because we commonly see that people who are at least symptomatic with Epstein-Barr may also have surreptitious Lyme disease. And I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, have heard about the huge impact that Lyme disease has on our population today. So this test is excellent for many, many things and can give a detailed amount of information to show us kind of what we should for treat first and what's most important. It happens also that if you send a blood specimen for this test, if we detect viruses in, in the sample and the test results, the same blood sample can be used to make a very special treatment, which is ex effective and unfortunately very little known about. It's called the viral SOT, or short oligonucleotide treatment. And basically what this involves is sequencing the messenger microRNA of the viral particles. As you may or may not know, DNA has to be opened up. It's normally double-stranded. It's opened up like a zipper, and the uh, RNA goes along and copies the sequence 
and then turns into a microRNA that will generate uh, proteins of that so that we can keep replicating the DNA and replicate the viral particles. So when they make a treatment, they sequence the microRNA base pairs and then make an antisense molecule that perfectly binds to it, opposites attract in this case, and once the microRNA is double-stranded, it can no longer function and it's taken out of the system, replication is stopped, and cells, the virus particles die. Now this is very, very important because if you don't stop replication, you'll never get rid of it. And we see many cases where, um, and, and I, you know, honestly, it's, I have, I love herbal treatment for viruses. I think it's a really great thing to do. However, in scrutinizing patients who have these problems in the last several years, I notice that many of the herbal treatments that we have relied upon will help clear serum viral particles, but not intracellular. Now here's the really important part of looking at this problem. We have cells in our bodies called macrophages that are very, very important for uh, detecting and engulfing uh, cells of our own that are infected and need to go. Okay, so that could be a cancer cell, it could be a cell infected with other viruses or bacteria, whatever. The macrophages are designed to have a, what they call a vacuole or a little container inside of it that contains uh, digestive enzymes so that once the uh, entity is engulfed, it can go inside this vacuole and be digested. Well, if you have chronic inflammation and infection in your body, macrophages may not function normally. And so those vacuoles may not have functional digestive, as it were, enzymes that can obliterate the entity. And what we're seeing with people who are chronically ill, that there is um, what they call intracellular viral particles living inside the macrophages. And in fact, they can live and when they get too big for the cell, the cell bursts open, releases more viral particles. So it's another way for the viral infection to kind of hide out in your system and then come back again. So this is very, very important. And there is no other test than the prime spot test that will show us whether there's serum and or intracellular virus. And this is really, really key. So when we make these treatments and we have patients take the treatment once every two, three months, we can monitor the progress by repeating the prime spot test to see if both the serum and the intracellular components are eradicated. Once this is done and you're completely negative on both counts, you can look to be really disease free for at least a year or two and then focus on how to prevent further infection and, and be careful about further exposure. I can't tell you how important this is because research has been present and done and not well publicized that Epstein-Barr virus uh, DNA is found in the macrophages that infil inf <laughs> infiltrate tumors. Now macrophages are supposed to help kill these cells. However, if they are affected by Epstein-Barr virus, these tumor-associated macrophages or TAMs, as they call them, actually will release proteins that encourage the development of the cancer. They call them oncogenic proteins. So they can encourage the angiogenesis, they can encourage all kinds of other uh, aberrations uh, genetically that will allow the cells to uh, migrate and uh, propagate more and, and really make the problem worse. So. <clears throat> I look at this test to help us evaluate people who are asymptomatic but know they've had an infection, people who are chronically ill and want to get better, and people who have cancer and want to make sure that they can fully eradicate their tumors um, with uh, having relapse-free life. And we found that if people have recurrences, we have to look at the untreated uh, viral infections to uh, ensure that patients have the result that we're all looking for, disease-free survival and thriving. Thank you for your attention. I hope that this has helped uh, educate you a little bit about this important topic. 
and of course you can always get more information from me uh, in a consultation uh, situation.